But really, the big news in sports and the big news in college basketball today is that Scott Drew uh, is staying at Baylor. He has spurned Kentucky. And um, let's just have a moment of silence for all those people that said, well, Scott Drew will go to Kentucky in a minute. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. And, and the, the reason is, is that the grass is not always greener on the other side. And so here's what we know. A plane left Waco and went to Lexington yesterday. Mm-hmm. While that plane was in the air, Scott Drew was having lunch with his friend Eric Shiro, the CEO of Alliance Bank. A big time booster. Uh, and they were eating at Mi Casita. Uh, and... Mikasita did, in fact, get a lot of phone calls from Big Blue Nation trying to get to Scott Drew. Mm. That plane that did not have Scott Drew on it came back and landed in Temple. That plane did have his family on it. Then this morning, Scott Drew informed Kentucky that he was not taking that job. So, here's how I will connect the dots for you. Clearly, his family was is a huge part of this, yes, as it should be. And there's a lot going on here that I think they don't want to leave. You know, he's got kids in high school, which if you were watching the triple option earlier, and uh, shame on you if you weren't. Uh, I kid, but please do watch it. Yes, watch. <laughs> we want you to watch it. I won't shame you much yet, uh, yet. <laughs> but if it goes on much longer, then I'll uh, like Garrett and I will find you. Uh, and then um, we're going to plop Jack in your house to do work and complain about things. And you don't want that. Nobody wants No, that. you don't want those problems. Nobody wants that problem. Nobody wants those problems. So, um, but uh, it's a really hard time to move kids when they're in high school. Like yes. little kids, like, you know, you may miss your little friend, but like when you're in high school, like you are really established. You, you, you think you know what your life is. Right, exactly. It's not what you think it is. Not at but all. But you think you know what your life is. And so that's a factor. And just look, Ashley Hodge told us on two different interviews that he fully believes that Scott is only going to coach five to seven more years Correct. and then retire and enjoy what would at that point be his sixties or there or close to it. If mm-hmm. it's five, it'll be just before if it's seven, it will be when he turns 60 years old. Right. And he, he wants to enjoy that time in his life. So like Jay Wright is right now. You know, like and do those things, and Scott will probably do a little bit of TV. Oh yeah, uh, you know he'll 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 be great. He's been he's done that before. He's been great at it. Um, he's he's so enthusiastic. So he chose to stay at Baylor because this is his programs. This is his program. He built it. Right. There's going to be a statue of him out there. They're going to name the court after him. That's that's going to happen one so, day. Go ahead and. That was not going to happen at Kentucky unless he won in those five to seven years. Probably like two or three. Two or three national titles, which it's hard to do. Look, Danny Hurley made it look as easy as it's been, like from the NCAA tournament last year to now. And I promise you, not one single day of his life has been easy. No way. <laughs> I mean, no. So <laughs> to win two in a row, they made it look as easy as you can make it look. Yeah. But I promise you that was not easy for anyone. Like, the games, they all won by 15 to 20 points. They were sweating. They're like, there were points, but they were like, oh, we haven't made a shot in five minutes. So, um, I, and Alan, I'm not talking about you. Uh, (laughs) By the way, you're very loyal. Alan is loyal. He's definitely loyal. Alan, I love you. I love you conditionally. Uh, (laughs) But uh, I, like, this was about keeping and finishing with what you built. And, look, there were a lot of pressures to take the Kentucky job Mm -hmm. from a lot of people close to him because it's the Kentucky job. Exactly. It's a Kentucky job. You can't not listen to it. Like, there are five jobs right now that if they came open, because I'm adding UConn to that list. That they have to be. Because, like, if Danny Hurley did go to Kentucky like Kentucky wanted him to, then UConn, you've got to listen because they've shown the ability, you've, you know, three different coaches have won titles. Yes. Two of them multiple titles, you know. 
Uh, the guy who won would have been the fourth one out of six was initially their interim coach. Yeah, he was. Kevin Ollie. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. Like, he was an interim coach and then and then took over. So, um, you know, you get three under Jim Calhoun, you get one for Kevin Ollie, and now you have two from, from Danny Hurley. Well, all right, great. Uh, that one's going to be there. Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, and Kansas when they're open. Right. And... You know, I think on that, like, if there's one that could, like, get an honorable mention, it would be UCLA. Because that's just they John, have the track that's John the Wooden's history, school. Yeah. Just like, you know, now look, it, like, you could compare to UCLA to Alabama in football with Bear Bryant and John Wooden. Now that comparison is over. Like, that's that's over. But, like, because it's it's John Wooden school, like, mm. and it's in L.A., which is a great, you know, like, you know, they, they like, they, they love, love basketball. basketball there. Like, there's a, that would be one I would listen to. You know, obviously, but maybe not as much as I would. Like even John Calipari turned down UCLA yeah. in 2019 to, to stay at Kentucky, which now he's saying he regretted. Which, yeah, how convenient was that? Yeah. Well, look, and, and so here we are. Um, Scott decides to stay here in Waco, and um, I mean, it was a, it was. Mildly surprising, given what was going on last night, where you see a plane landing with his family getting off. But, you know, like, they've got, like, they're entrenched here. Mm -hmm. And uh, going, if he was five to eight years younger than he is right now, I would have said, like, you know, look, that's that's it. Yeah. But then you throw in all the factors, and it was just too much to turn, to, to turn away from here. This is... Everything he 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 built here is now starting to, to really pay off, and I I do believe this. I mean, I've talked to several sources off the record about this today. Uh, earlier, after we found out, mm. I do not think. Now, look, there might be a like a player that throws out a number that he's like, "That's stupid. I'm not doing that." Right. Yeah. Um. You know. Best of luck. I'm not going to do that. But if I think now, when it comes to NIL, well, they're good. They're they're Fair very they're good. they're solid. And I don't think there's going to be like a like oh, see if you can get them for like how about how about we ask him for a 25 percent off coupon? Like yeah, not that's gonna not going to have to happen anymore. I think he is solidified NIL for the basketball team that will be where if both sides are in the same vicinity it's going to get done yeah uh, like that's not to say he's just going to go and like you know um use daddy daddy's credit card like a sorority girl on spring break <laughs> that's not what that's going to happen just when they have the opportunities to make those things they're not going to have to go back and forth like right. the, the guy's going to be taken care of in, in all those regards so um i I think it's it's great news for the Big 12, too. That, yes. It's really great news for the Big 12. Um, because, and here's the other reason it's great news for the Big 12. There's There are two very real scenarios that would have ca caused Big 12 dominoes to keep falling. You know, like, and especially if you start going to poach in your own. Like, yep. so, if it was Grant McCaslin, then Tech's got to go get somebody. We'll say Tech then goes to say, well, you know what? We want Jerome Tang now. Well, Jerome Tang is still mad at the you know president, which I, I don't know how much like that still exists right, or yeah. whatever that is. Okay, then Kansas State has to go get somebody. Well, what if Kansas State goes and hires an assistant off of the um, – you know, uh, TCU staff. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, or Alvin Brooks, or, or Alvin Brooks. Yeah. Like, you get to like go like this, like round and round and round. You go when it comes to like all that. So, um, or like, you know, maybe Baylor wants to hire John Jacobs, and then FAU. Like, yep. so now look, does it keep it out of the Big Twelve? No, because I think TJ Otzelberger is probably at least on the list to should definitely be to call. Yeah. I don't think he's. I don't think they're too TJ Otzelberger yet. But his style does seemingly would seem to fit Kentucky. Um, but also, like, you know, Scott Drew is a very deeply religious person who is who who every step of the way is is moved by his faith. Which, I mean, look, the statement says it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Jesus, others than ourselves or yourselves. So that's the, the culture of joy. Um, and so... When he prayed on it and feels that he's got clarity, believe me, like that clarity, uh, you know, he believes in his heart is coming from above. This is not, <laughs> this is nobody else telling him this. Well, two people, God 
and his Mrs. Drew. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, because again, happy wife, happy life. And if she's going to be, if she and your family are going to be happier here, you have to consider that. And one of the things that he has been able to do, which is a, something a lot of coaches don't get to do, is really put down roots in a place and stay. Mm -hmm. Coaching is an itinerant profession. It is very, very difficult to even successful coaches. So sometimes you're so successful, like you keep, you know, Kalen DeBoer, you know, is really hoping Alabama works out well. Yeah. Because then he won't ever have to move again. Exactly. You know, like, um, the, like the Dan, Lan Dan Landing situation. Yes. He, he said, I, yeah, I found like, my home. I'm here in Oregon to yeah. stay. And I do think that there is, there's a benefit to that. You know, um, I know, I know yesterday. Tom, Tom Osborne probably moved twice in his life once he got the Nebraska job and is only to get a newer house. Yeah. And even then, it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't. No, that's a good point. <laughs> you know, like, this is the house we bought. This is where our kids were raised. This is where we're going to stay. we're staying. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, like, I felt really confident yesterday. I think we, we had all talked about this. When the picture came out of, of Drew at Mikasita, I was like, okay, I, this feels like one where he's saying, this is my underlying message that I'm staying put. And then when everything started circulating, and I think I believe it was last night when Darby over at KWTX put the poster of the uh, the, the – tweet out of them land his family landed back at temple i was like okay maybe this is a situation where he i started thinking well he deflected the family and the track the flight mm -hmm. tracker and everything mm -hmm. but the more i started thinking about he's, it i started to get go ahead he's honestly not that sad no, he's probably not but <laughs> it, just, it just felt like one of those things where you try to put the attention over here get away from your family it, it, it is what it is but i started to get a little nervous at that point because I was started thinking about the staff, right? Like he, you just lost Bill Peterson, and Jacobs is gone, and I started thinking, well, it's not nothing new to him. He's had to reconstruct his staff over the past few years, but is that another element of this where you're looking at it like I could go to Kentucky and put the staff together? But then the more I started thinking about it, because I try to put myself in people's places and in, in different scenarios and situations, and like you mentioned with the family, like I have a daughter who's in high school. There's no way in hell she would want to move. Like I, I've, we've had these conversations with the past. Like it's not going to happen. Um, but then, like for me and my family, like it's peace and tranquility. And yesterday was the prime example of if you take that job, all of that is gone. Yeah. Like I have never. I've been here pretty much my entire life. I've never seen Scott Drew outside of Baylor. Like I've never seen them in the public here. Like they they seem to live a life that's pretty off okay. the radar and you that is completely gone if you take that job yeah um there are coaches wise that have been here assistant coaches that i've met or all that you know through in passing or at games or that know us or whatever right. but uh the longest tenured coach scott drew like i've i've met kelly drew like in 19 years of being here like three to five times yeah that's in the longest i ever talked to her was one time i was walking into a restaurant and they were walking out of a restaurant and it was like there it was a it was like a coaching event like right they were there and my mom was with me and so i i wanted to introduce my mom to coach drew and then she was right there so we talked for a second and that was it like it's not like and there's how many times i'll tell you this how many times have you seen kelly drew on the broadcast, like nervously watching the game. Like, never. Never. I mean, because they, they might have gotten like one shot over the years, but, but it's not a consistent thing. Yeah. No, I mean, that's not like, that's not. And sometimes you do, you see the, the doting wife that's there and, you know, like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, like watching the game, getting fired up. And that's, that's, that's just not their personality. You go to Kentucky and already Ooh. they had stuff on the message boards, like from the people who did like, it's, it's a lot, it's a different animal. See, and I, and this this fits him really well, and no, it, I I fits them really well as a family, and I'm sure. Look, he had people in his ear telling, like, dude, you got to take it. It's Kentucky. It's Kentucky. Kentucky. But sometimes, you know, it's just not the right time. And there was a time I do believe that Kentucky would have gotten this done in about 40 minutes. Dude, I really think if this came out. I would. I, it's weird to say like two years ago, maybe, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe two years ago, you won a natty. You didn't have the the uh, the foster built yet. I think even then he probably would have gone. I really do firmly believe Baylor's ability to step up in NIL for basketball. Um, I, they're to me they're starting to shift more. I've always felt like this. And I know people like 
Baylor fans and stuff have pushed back on me. I view Baylor as a basketball school. I view Baylor like a Michigan State or North Carolina where you're good at football on a regular basis, but basketball is your bread and butter. A lot of people will disagree with that, but that's how I view it. And, like, why would you want to – I don't know. You have everything set in place. There's no need to go to Kentucky when all you're going to get is a little more exposure and more of a headache. Like, why would you even bother with that? Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot like, and again, it used to be, you know, look and, and, um, every fan base has their crazies. Yeah. They're crazies, but I mean, Kentucky just has them in droves. And, you know, one of the things that like you, you always have to, in every situation in life, you have to take the good with the bad, right? Mm -hmm. So the good is you take a job like Kentucky and when you go on the road, Oh yeah, I mean the, the SEC tournament was mostly Kentucky fans. Yep. Um, if you watch the final between Auburn A and M, that was dead in Nashville. It's because Kentucky lost and they just left, and nobody was there to buy their tickets because uh, well Auburn's, uh, you know I guess reasonably close enough to Nashville where right. you could decide to run up there and go. Uh, College Station is not. You know, like but that's Auburn's, a, Auburn's that's different. A, like that's, yeah, a, that's but if it was football, they would travel. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But uh, but Kentucky fans were there. I remember when Baylor played Kentucky in Atlanta, in the oh, Georgia, that's Catlanta. in the Georgia Dome. Yeah, oh yes, that's Catlanta. Uh, in the Georgia Dome in in 2013, 13 would have been 13 or 14. Yeah, when they won the national title, Anthony Davis. Yeah, when the the brow, the brow. Um, so. Baylor played Xavier in the in the Sweet 16. Mm. And that game was very well attended by Kentucky fans. <laughs> Baylor, Xavier, and whoever Kentucky was playing before I now forget. Right. Um, um, were not as well representatives. And then when the other two teams were out, when you get there like on Saturday or Sunday, whatever that, that day was, and forgive me again, I don't remember the exact days because that was the most hectic month of my life of no. traveling. I wish I would do it if I was still single, I would try to do it every year, but it was it was, was stressful. Yeah. It was awesome. It was great, but it was awesome. It was it was I mean, it was great, it was awesome, but it was like uh mind numbing. Uh when you have to fly from Albuquerque, New Mexico to Bowling Green, Ohio, and you have to find a way to get that done in about eighteen hours. Like that's that don't sound fun. No, <laughs> that, that sounds no. tedious. Also, Bowling Green, Ohio, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Bowling Green, Ohio, an incorporated city. Uh, that that's that's what I'll say uh, about it. <laughs> Bowling Green, Ohio, mostly paved roads. Uh, so, I uh, but. But the 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 amount of fans, like it was ninety five to five. Yeah. And all the Kentucky fans, save for I'm sure there were like a few speckled in there, were sitting here. And then like Mama Do and like a group of Baylor fans were sitting behind me, and that's all I knew. That's it. Yeah. Honestly, like, do you ever see that movie The Three Hundred? Oh yeah. That's exactly what it felt like. That's what it felt like. Was like, okay, if there's a brawl here. It better be Just miraculous like that. But we're taking some casualties no matter what. Yeah. Like, it would be one of those things, you know. that That's what it felt like. And the Baylor team are, was already going to have a hard time with that great oh, Kentucky yeah. team. It's the that last time they won the title. Loaded. Anthony Davis is going to maybe John be on Hall of Fame. Yeah. Who was going to come to Baylor. Yeah. <laughs> um, remind me to tell you a story in the break. About okay. That, yeah, by the way. I'm interested. Uh, <laughs> it's one I can't tell in the air, but it's, Already. it's a good one. <laughs> um, so um, anyhow, uh, he, it was, you, you said have that, but the problem, but the problem with it mm. is that because there's so many more, there's so many more people who are nuts. Yeah. Like you can, you can kind of keep the Baylor crazies in like one little jar. Yeah, there's a little there's a little group of you know there's who they a little are. group. Like yeah. there's a little group of the Baylor crazies, right? You cannot like the Kentucky ones. It's like you, you don't even know like they're coming from everywhere. They're hiding amongst the normals. Yeah, like you can't you can't discern it, and so it's a different thing altogether. It's a different thing altogether. We have lots of people lined up.